But, uh, you know, one of the things that I, I really liked, and this is two weeks in a row, uh, in, you know, they, they, these weren't large stories in The Observer, but I, you were pointing stuff out. And you and Brian talked about it a little bit with the with the injuries and such. But the other part of this that I thought was fascinating, because it's pretty much the way that, that I feel and I felt on Wednesday when when they talked about the Brian Danielson segment and then he did the, the opening promo to that show, which is the secrecy around these injuries and i i understand it to a point where you know some maybe some of these people don't want the injuries out but also it helps tony you know with storylines if if he can keep some of these secrets uh some of these injuries secret but 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 i i think it hurts more than helps because it you know like one of the things that I think was was really a negative in the creation of this interim championship was that battle royal because you're going like, why isn't this guy in? Why isn't this guy in? Why isn't this guy in? And some of them, you know, like with Adam Page and with Wardlow, it was just like they tried to give you a bad explanation, but they weren't, you know, and all that. But a lot of them, you know, were injuries or in the case of Jericho, he had the week off. But I mean, it's like there's – but if he has the week off, you can do an injury angle, you know, like where Kingston gets back in him for a one-week thing. Um, because you have that storyline going, but I mean, it's like you're you're looking at this, and by you know not saying anything about Danielson until weeks later, people are going like, why is Brian Danielson not in there? Why is this guy not in there? And and it's it's like, I think because the number of injuries is so high that it's almost off putting in both sides because it's gone on both sides because it used to be. You know, WWE used to at one point used to just tell you these are all the injuries. This is the injury list, right? You know, it was very easy to come by, and now it's like everything's secretive. You know, and partially because of the, there's everyone's so wary about the concussion issue, and then with AEW, I think it's just a plethora of injuries where they don't want you to go like, oh my god, everyone's getting hurt, which they are. You know, especially right now, and then you got questions like, what do you do to alleviate it? And I, th- I think Lance Storm may have done a show with Brian. I didn't hear the show. Yes, but I mean, Lance Storm and I, Lance Storm and I actually, you know, uh, message each other about this, you know, this week, and and have you know over the years, many, 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 many times, um, because it's a very concerning thing. Because as you know, I, I see these this thing happening where you're you're. Um, I, I, the schedule, it's funny because I can relate this back to all Japan in the 90s. And everyone remembers that wonderful period where they had those, all those great matches. And I was very close with Doug Furness. And Doug Furness's mentality was that it's the greatest thing in the world because we work 26 weeks a year, not 52. So we can go in there and we can go in there. And then we get the Budokan show. And after Budokan, we got three weeks off to rest. So we, you know, so they would go all out in those Budokan matches. You look back on them now, they're, they're incredible, but you do so much in those matches, knowing you've got three weeks off that you, um, you know, it's like you, you end up hurting yourself, uh, um, because of that, that cushion in your brain that I don't got to work tomorrow so mm-hmm. I can go all out and there's 16,000 people here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that what we're getting here is when you wrestle one match every two weeks or whatever it, it is for a lot of these guys, maybe once a week or something, you you're not in this mentality of, man, I got to I got to do this tomorrow. You know what I mean? I got to, you know, um, keep myself whole. I can't be doing this crazy stuff. And you don't have that. And by doing that, you know, you have there's there's that injury risk. And then the other one is the one where, you know, Nick Jackson, when we was on our show, you know, just goes like it just, you know, your body's not if you're working like three nights a week or two nights a week. You know, your body is is calloused, I think, to a lot of the bumps. But when you do it without it, it's like you're you're starting over every time. You know, like if you if you like are on a training regimen and let's say you go, let's just say you're a runner and you're running, um, you know, two, three miles, three times a week and you're in shape and you're in tune. You know, you just think about this. Don't run for about a month and then go that first day. And, and it's like, or, or maybe r- do the run once every two weeks instead of three times a week. And it's just like, you're hurting a lot more the next day um, because your body's not, you know, so you've got th- got that conditioning issue. There's just a lot of things, but but this all, what, what AEW has done with the style of working so many less matches, which on paper sounds like the greatest thing in the world, you know, you 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 learn as, as we've gone on. And what we've learned is, is that... Um, you know, you either have to tone down 
or maybe some of these guys need to work more indie dates um, just to keep their body calloused. I don't know the answer exactly, but I know that this injury rate, when I look at it, is, is um, you know, and I think a lot of it is, the, is style as well. And we have the other, the other issue is, is that, you know, everybody is really in tune now when it comes to AEW and Tony and, and everyone of just going out there and giving you these great matches and you really get them, you know, um, and I don't know if there's a thing where your cows to it. Cause like when new Japan was on fire and having all those great matches, that wasn't a negative, you know, it was building the company. Um, but I feel like, um, you know, that, that like, you know, Christian almost said it in a weird way about like, you know, go out there and try to do a match that's remembered more, you know, for 20 years instead of a week. And it's like, you know, that's a great line for him to say, you know, in his promo, but also in real life, the problem is, is that like, you can't do that match because every week there's a new one. Yeah. And it's not like these guys don't know how to work it. I mean, I watch I watch a match every week that I think if this was in the 80s, we'd be, we'd be talking about it for a year and it would win match of the year. If it was in the 2000s, maybe we wouldn't talk about it as much, but we would be at the end of the year, it'd be one of the 10 matches we talk about. And here, you know, because we have so many so often and they all, you know, it's like it can't stand out and there's almost nothing... I don't know what you can do to stand out as far as having a great match. I mean, you can have them and they're wonderful um, and you can even be benefited. I mean, I, I watched, you know, in Granite Small, the um, Takashita, you know, with Adam Page and um, Nick Wayne with Osprey. And so I watched those matches and those matches were the kind of matches where if this is on a national platform and the Takashita match was, you, it's almost like, wow, we're, we're creating a superstar but because it's so often, it doesn't even it, – it, in those two cases, it could have worked. Like if the Nick Wayne match was on a national TV show that, you know, he, he would have been like the talk of the town, okay? But it wasn't. It was in GCW. And, you know, people talk about it a little bit, but it's, but it, it's GCW. You know, you're limited. Takeshita was um, on national TV. And politically, because we're doing the New Japan thing and he's a TD, DDT guy, Tony kind of had handcuffs as far as following up. You know, unfortunately, it was the worst timing for that best – for the best match – because because I I watch him now and I feel like oh my god this guy could be you know like one of your top tier guys and he still can be but um you know but but it's like those two matches I talked about they're not even the best matches I've seen the last couple of weeks um and even even in AEW and stuff you know we had the ladder match with um you know the Young Bucks and um um Luke Source and Jungle Boy which is out of, you know out of this world and um you know Nick got his nose i don't know if it was broken or not he uh, bt said it was broken but i remember when i asked them they said it wasn't broken so maybe it wasn't they thought it wasn't it wasn't um and then um jungle boy had shoulder injury so he's out and but it's it's like the match was incredible it didn't move ratings and um and it should have ladder match with the for the tag team title and you know because we've, we've come we've seen so much in the gimmick department and so it's um it's very tough. It's, it's it's a it's really tough because when you're calling card, and what you built your company around is we're going to give better matches than the other guys. Um, you know, at at one point, anything that you do, for, you know, so much is going to lose effectiveness in time. And better wrestling is nice to have, of course. But I mean, there were there were points when Impact had these great pay per views month after month, and it wasn't like Impact, um, you know, um, you know, took great great strides with it, you know, because they had the other issues, and um, so it's it's um, you know it's it's the AEW stuff. I mean, you know, there's there's so much to talk about when it comes to AEW um, right now. It's a very transitional thing. Um, my gut is. You know, this is the optimistic point of view right now. And it's probably true because I was talking to somebody in the company uh, a couple of days ago when I actually went through this is right now it's going to be tough because you don't have punk. MJF is out. Um, you know, Omega's out, obviously. And, and, uh, and it's not like MJF is out because of injury, though. He's out because of storyline. Like they could bring him back whenever they want. They could bring him back tomorrow. Yeah, I know. I know. And it's a weird one, too, because I think that storyline is – um. The, the more time goes by, it's kind of dead. The more I think that that storyline wasn't a good idea at all, um, both because of the trust issue between talent, because all the talent thinks they know, but none of them know because they're not told. And then you're kind of like once you're in that realm with a talent where you don't trust it, 
I think that that's such a negative because I saw that in WCW and the talent just doesn't, you know, Tony had something um, where, you know, every, you know, Tony, you know, you ask Tony, you get, a, you get an answer. It may not be, um, you know, I mean, it's, it, you, you know what you're you you can read what you're getting. And now with a veil of secrecy over everything, you just don't know. It's just become a very weird thing. And I think that's been a negative. Um, and the injury thing is part of it too, because it's like, all these injuries are secretive. You don't know what's going on. They don't tell you. So and, the, I, I wanted to actually go back to that because now I will. But, give, but, but, because because one thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. go through. The, the thing, what, what's what's surprising to me is his background, aside from you know growing up wanting to be a pro wrestling guy, is football and soccer. Yeah, and it's like I one of the things that I thought with with him. But as a positive, because so many of these wrestling people came like like a lot of the some of the fans and we talk about this, some of the fans and a lot of the people in wrestling, like literally their only world is wrestling. So they get these warped things, you know, like, oh, you know, like you should never, you know, a wrestler talking to the media. It's like, you know, you know, like the stuff that I got because my start was was not wrestling. My start was real sports right you know and even and even until a couple of years ago and it was heavily heavily you know working you know s- sort of full-time in mma and all the mma people would be just like oh ufc so hard to deal with and blah 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 and it's like <laughs> you know for me i love these guys these you know i can ask questions all the time everyone's cool with me you know i mean it's not perfect um but like the ones that had come from real sports backgrounds would would find ufc tough and i go I come to my world you wouldn't right. even believe it right but Tony is from the real world. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's why it's kind of it, it's kind of interesting when he came in. I thought, OK, he's going to view the fans and he's going to view, you know, the fans as similar to a football guy or a soccer guy. And that's going to be so much more healthier than these wrestling people. Not that they like have that low opinion of the fans like in the past where all the everyone looked down on the fans as being stupid and everything. And and and. And all that, because it's not that's not really there to that level anymore. But you still come from that world where, you know, you're, you come from the con man world and we're, we're still trying to con everybody. And it's just built into your DNA. Like as much as Vince wants to change, he still comes from that world, you know, and and and, and the guys that are with him are still all from that world. Um, whereas Tony comes from a different world. Um, and I remember like one person was always talking to me about how, like, you know, the one thing is that the, the great difference between Tony and Vince and kind of a couple of weeks ago just goes like, uh, you know, it's, it's the difference isn't as big as you, as you thought it was. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a different, still a difference. It's, it's a big difference, but it's still, it's just like in the MJF thing was actually the, the, the turning point where it was just like, you know, he's out there trying to do what Eric Bischoff and Kevin Sullivan did 25 years ago, not even realizing that. We all talk about Brian Pillman, but since Brian Pillman um, and CM Punk and the pipe bomb, we've had these things over and over again that no one remembers because CM Punk was unique. Brian Pillman was unique. Um, copying them is is not necessarily unique, but we'll see. But the the roundabout, and I should let you get to what you were saying, but the one, one, the one roundabout thing is that is with these guys all out now and Danielson and everything like this. The one thing with AEW right now is, is the summer may be tough, um, ratings wise. We're talking about and 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 a lot also less people watching TV, and that's a fact, and that's what it is. Now WWE's done great numbers this last week. I mean, uh, uh, we're, we're, let's save that WWE thing because I have a pretty big question about what they did last week and then on, on Monday as far as ratings. But uh, when we get to the WWE stuff, I'll ask you about that. We can stay on the AEW for right now. Okay, Drew. The, the one thing is, is that. The most important thing for AEW, especially with Discovery, with the cutting cutting back and everything, is um, big ratings in the fall, in the fall, winter, and spring, because that's when the contract's going to be uh, negotiated. So the idea is, if you bring Punk and MJF back and Omega back at a certain point when you're doing the negotiations and the numbers, in theory, if they go up and it looks like you're on the ascent. This summer being down will not be a negative. Um, in fact, it may even be a positive to keep these guys off and then have them all come back at once and, you know, build to if it's if the dream match is Punk and Omega or or whatever, you know, um, the, the award low going for the championship. All of these things that you hope 
will hit big. You know, you never know, but that you hope for. It's better to have them months from now than have them now. So that's the one positive. Um, I don't say positive, but the one thing of a lot of guys are out now, but they're all going to probably come back at around the same time. Mm -hmm. And you may be able to get like a big, um, you know, a big boost. And the, the other thing is, is, you know, and I believe this when it comes to the AEW ratings, um, is punk is really a big deal. Um, and I think that that, I think that's hurt in some ways. And, and, you know, there's other things, you know, the, the build, the build to this show has been, um, you know, it's, it's a different type of show. Is it viable? We're going to know. Okay. You know, here, 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 here's a question that I, I wasn't even thinking about until just right now with all the guys that got hurt. Now, this person also got hurt, but Cody would actually look pretty good on AEW television right now if he was healthy, right? Because they, they they've lost. Yeah, guys, but, he's, but he's, he's he's hurt, he's hurt too. But I know what you're saying. Like if if you had Cody, would it would it help? I'm um, in a good program right now. Yeah, but I mean he'd be fighting someone you know from Japan. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.